Tucked between Ball's Head Reserve and the Waverton Peninsula Reserve, the post-industrial site that formed part of Sydney's working harbour as a receiving point for coal, the Waverton Coal Loader plans to become one of Sydney's largest public accessible green roof spaces. North Sydney Council's in-house landscape architect, David Banbury, is the project manager for the coal loader development. Located at the main entrance of the coal loader is the Centre for Sustainability. With a strong focus on community engagement and education, this concert has become a framework for the design of the larger scale development that is to be taken place. Yeah, here with David Banbury. So David, how did you come to the conclusion that a green roof would be beneficial for this site? Uh, it arose during the master planning phase and one of the ideas that came through at that stage were, was the idea of using ESD, ecologically sustainable development principles in, for the whole of the coal loader site and the BP site. We developed that during the detailed design mainly to look at the site hy hydrology particularly the drainage of the platform. With the surrounds of the coal loader, there's been an attempt to re-establish the native vegetation. With the actual green roof, are you going to take a similar approach? The local community, well, the broader community, really, they treat the bushland areas with reverence because they're, they're so special and, so, and scarce. So all that, what you see today, is, has been planted and nurtured by the community. It's, it's really back to its original state almost now. Stormwater management uh, like across the globe is a huge issue with hard surfaces of urbanisation. That's being fixed on site in the proposal. What's the process of that? Like, where will the stormwater go? The, the, the whole platform is relatively level. Has very slight falls on it, but not not enough to for what we need. So we what we're doing is to tilt, tilting the the edges of the platform up, the eastern and the east, western edges, by using fill, and that that then creates a swale, a longitudinal swale for the about 180 metres long. Uh, that gentle grade directs all the surface water across to the rain gardens. In, tunnel, uh, in the chutes above tunnel number three. So any water that goes through the soil hits the subgrade, it also tracks horizontally down to that, that swale point. And then the water filters through the rain gardens. It's set up to um, improve the water quality and then we capture it through pipes at the bottom of the chutes and then pump it into the, well, gravity feeds into the tank system. And then we pump from those tanks back to irrigate the green roof. So it's a constant cycle. Yeah. Circle, yeah, constant cycle. So it's, yeah. Would there be a sort of retail sector on site that would be using what's produced on the green roof? Uh, again, I don't think so. Really, the way the current community garden works is if you participate in the garden, you get to take the produce home. So if you come to the meeting every week, you, you, um, yeah, you get to share the, the harvest. Uh, similarly, if you look after the chickens, if you open and close them in the morning, you get to take the eggs for the day. So it's, it's all about that community involvement. We've re never really gone down that commercial road. Yeah. It's not intended to be profit making. Yeah. The, the urban harvest and the community garden idea is it's more about social interaction. It always comes down to people meeting each other and that, just that social, the social benefit. Um, we notice there's a 3D fly through available online to look at. Um, we saw in that there's like a number of solar panels um, on the green roof. What would they be powering? There's, the, there's two aspects to the solar. There's the what's called the BIPV, Building Integrated Photovoltaic Panels on the Shade Colonnades. And then there's the dual axis tracking panels on the so at the southern end of the platform. Yeah. Aside from just power generation, they're, they're trying to achieve a number of objectives. So the ones on the shade colonnade, they, they provide shade, shelter from the, sun, uh, the rain. And the, the tracking panels themselves, are, they're also meant to be an interpretive sculptural element, so they draw people down to the southern end. In three words, how would you describe the project? The word that always comes up to me is, is unique. Like, it's a re it is really a unique site that I personally find it inspirational. Mm -hmm. It's it's really also it's all about the community and, and it's really the whole reason we're doing the, this site is for is to bring the community together.
It's been a long day without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. We've come a long